So thank you, Deirdre. So we, we still we are still admitting people. Um, and so we have a a long how many people do you have so far, Darwin? Right here, 28. There were 30, 34 registered, registered for this session. So as people get, keeps getting in, please um, um, mute your mic. Okay, so let me know whenever you want to start and we start. There it is, we start. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me why my now it's me. Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another session of the New York Flu Club. Um, I just want to play session. My name is Darwin Cosme, and I'm thrilled to be presenting tonight uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Miguel Angel Villanueva, who is, uh, I think, one of the most influential flutists in Mexico. Um, he has, I have got teaching with him, and tonight's um, lecture is about the, reper the Mexican repertoire which he has obviously um, a vast knowledge of it because practically most of the Mexican repertoire has been commissioned or written for him. Uh, so just a little background about Mr. Villanueva. Uh, Mr. Villanueva has built a soloist career and a chamber, uh, he's a chamber musician internationally, not only in Mexico, but abroad. Um, he also studied in, in Paris. So he has a very French, uh, style of playing. Um, currently, he is the professor at the University uh, Nacional uh, Universidad Autónoma de México, and he is the uh, director of the National Flute uh, Festival and Competition. So I won't take I won't take more time from him. So I hope you enjoyed this afternoon, this evening's lecture. Okay, hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, Darwin is okay, the sound? Yeah, see, sí. yes. Okay, so so uh, let me uh, begin, let me begin with uh, um, a little apology because English is not my second language. So I hope to make me understand because I have a important information to give to you and I hope you find this information uh, very interesting as it is. Um, uh, I prepared a small PowerPoint uh, presentation. So uh, I'm going to share my screen in order to uh, make this uh, presentation, okay? So, is it? I think you can see, eh? okay? So, hi, the first thing. <laughs> So uh, Darwin said that I, I'm going to talk about Mexican music, but the thing is that the quantity, the amount of new repertoire by Mexican composers is just huge. Uh, in the last 20 years, uh, a lot of composers, a lot of flute players, uh, not only flute players, but uh, many other uh, uh, instruments, musicians, have commissioned a lot of works uh, to Mexican composers. So I'm going to talk just uh, about a small part of this repertoire and actually is the repertoire for flute and orchestra, okay? By Mexican composers. But actually I'm going to, to talk, I would like to talk a little bit. Uh, this uh, context, the historic context of this uh, music. So, um, the beginning, uh, Mexico wasn't Mexico, <laughs> so it was New Spain. But before that, the, the Aztec Empire was around 1428 to 
1519. Then occurred the Spanish conquest in 1519 uh, in to 1521. Uh, and then it was the colony of Spain called New Spain from uh, 1521 to 1810 about. So the independence war took place between 1810 to 1821. And then in 1821, Mexico was born as a new country, okay? So where did the German fruit arrive in Mexico? So, uh, well, actually it arrived in New Spain because uh, I like to tell you that in America, there are, 35 countries and just few of them have the luck to have a baroque, baroque period in music. Mexico is one of them with Guatemala and uh, Peru and I think many uh, uh, some others but I'm not sure but uh, Guatemala, Peru and Mexico has uh, have this uh, uh, baroque period. So according to Dr. Maria Diaz Canedo, uh, the first document uh, telling us that uh, the flute arrived uh, is uh, from a flute player that was hired uh, in 1743. His name was Andres Espinosa de los Monteros and was hired to play the flautra travesiera, was the ancient name of a German flute in Spain, in, in Spanish. So uh, as many of you know, uh, the musicians at that time played many instruments, not only one. Uh, they usually play a German flute and a violin or uh, they were composition and educators too. So uh, this is about the German flute. Uh, then, uh, as I told you, Mexico was born in 19th century as a country, uh, and the first music association uh, was founded in 1824. So the first regular orchestra, I mean, in the modern concept with woodwinds, strings, and brass percussions uh, was in 1824 to 20, 1829. And according to Dr. Luis Aguilar, uh, in 1825 arrived the first print machine uh, to America, actually, in, in Mexico. And uh, that was very important because Mexican composers could, for the first time, publish his uh, musical works, his com uh, their compositions. So uh, we have uh, a war with the United States between 1846 to 1848, uh, we lost uh, about the half of our territory in that war. And then we had a war with France from 1862 to 1867. And uh, during this time in the 19th century, it was the golden age of the opera. And that's important because uh, most of the repertoire in Mexico uh, was um, uh, variations uh, after uh, the uh, most uh, famous opera airs or themes, and uh, they were uh, transcriptions. Many of the composers made compositions for flute, for instance, flute, violin, and piano, or flute orchestra, but there were uh, uh, variations uh, after these uh, opera uh, arias. So uh, almost the 19th century was under the Italian influence in music, but at the end of the uh, 19th century, the uh, French influence uh, took place in Mexico. So the models, the flute models in Mexico, according to this catalog from Wagner and Levian, there were the, the a music house in Mexico. So this catalog show us thus, um, that um, we had uh, flutes in wood, one key to 11 keys. 
this, the variety of uh, fruit models in Mexico. And uh, there were uh, wooden flutes to the system and a wooden flutes, berm system, uh, the, the house Gautreau or Martin uh, were the constructors and this berm, berm system uh, in metal too, in 1885. So you have an idea about this, uh, but, uh, this quantity, this amount of uh, flute models there were in Mexico. So this flute player, is very important because Juan Hernandez Acevedo was a very, very good flute player in, at the end of the 19th century. He actually was the first Mexican flute player who uh, studied at the Paris Conservatoire, Conservatoire National Superior de Musique de Paris. He was a student from uh, uh, Henri Altes, we know this, uh, a teacher, I'll test the, the, the method. I think we all uh, at the, some point uh, studied this uh, uh, with this method. And he's very important because he's at the beginning of a line of flute players and teachers uh, uh, that uh, until today we have this influence. So even Altes composed a piece for him because he was, he became a, a very good friend from Altes. And uh, this Neuvième solo was dedicated, it seems here, uh, a son ami, see, to his friend Juan Hernández Acevedo. And this piece was the set piece for the uh, uh, concours, the, the competition, the final competition, in 1886 at the Paris Conservatoire, okay? So if we can talk about a Mexican school, so at the beginning, there is Juan Hernández Acevedo and he's, after, after him, his student, his best student was Librado Suárez. Librado Suárez was the best, apparently, the best flute player uh, in Mexico uh, at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Librado Suarez used to play uh, a soloist, many of the pieces on concertos by Wilhelm Pop. Uh, I think no one knows uh, about this uh, composer, Wilhelm Pop, German one. Uh, but at that time, uh, his music was very, very uh, played by many, many flute players in Mexico. So after him, his student, Agustin Oropesa, took the place in the Conservatoire of Mexico, and he was the first flute player in the National Symphony of Mexico. Then, uh, after Agustin Oropesa, there was Rubén Islas, uh, I think you saw in the Flute Quarterly this uh, investigation, this research uh, published by Jonathan Borja, one of the Mexican flute players who lives uh, now in the United States. And after uh, Ruben Islas, it was Hector Jaramillo, one of his best students, who is actually uh, the, he, he was the uh, first flute, principal flute in the uh, orchestra of the university. Okay, this is a little bit about the Mexican flute school. So, modern flute concertos is uh, what I wanted to talk about. Uh, when I was a student, I came. Uh, it came to me uh, this uh, book the autobiography by James Galway. I don't know if you have uh, read this, uh, auto, this book, but um, for me it was very important because it was very inspirational in the scene that, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, Galway uh, told us or will tell us that for him it was very uncomfortable to play in orchestra because he wanted that the flute uh, it was uh, heard. 
and in the orchestra uh, with all the, the, the instruments in the Berliner Philharmonic, uh, he felt that uh, the flute uh, was one of the, all the instruments and the people, uh, the audience couldn't appreciate uh, the special sound of this uh, wonderful instrument. So he took his, uh, the decision to leave, to, uh, the, to quit, the Berliner Philharmonic in order to uh, make a soloist career. And for me, it was uh, very impressive uh, to, to read about him, about this decision. So uh, I, I went to study in Paris. And then when uh, I came back to Mexico, I realized that in the programs of the orchestras, the flute wasn't present at all, or almost at all. So for me, it was a little bit, uh, uh, I felt that uh, like an injustice. Uh, and I uh, started to analyze the reasons why the flute wasn't programmed as a soloist instrument. So I realized that the repertoire was a, a little bit limited in, in terms of new music, of new uh, flute concertos. Obviously, the conductors uh, uh, knew uh, Ebert Concerto or Nielsen Concerto, etc. But uh, many of the conductors don't like, uh, for instance, Ebert Concerto. Uh, I remember I made uh, uh, an audition for a conductor, and he asked me, what do you want to play? And I told him the Ebert Concerto. And he told me, no, that's a horrible piece. I don't like that concerto. You play very well, but I don't like that concerto. So I wasn't programmed, it, that, that's it. And then I realized that I, I wanted to do something about it. So these are a list of uh, flute concertos that I commissioned already. Uh, this composer is very important. He has uh, a traditional language. Very, uh, I'm going to, to, to share with you some of the recordings. Uh, this is about 10 flute concertos already in the 21st, 21st century. And uh, there are others. Um, these are my commissions for other uh, com com uh, composers. Eugenio Toussaint, Hugo Rosales, Horacio Uribe, Lucia Álvarez, Patricia Moya, two flute concertos, uh, Roberto Peña, and Francisco Cortez, who studied in the United, uh, Indiana University in the United States. But uh, there are uh, a lot of composers with different backgrounds and uh, the, they, they have uh, uh, many uh, languages, very different, very interesting music. So another uh, very important uh, flute player in Mexico is Marisa Canales. Marisa Canales is a director to the Urtext Digital Classics, and he lives part-time in Mexico, part-time in Boston. Uh, and uh, he, she commissioned uh, uh, two these uh, concertos by these composers, Samuel Siman, Eduardo Angulo, Eugenio Toussaint, Eduardo Gamboa, Gabriela Ortiz, and Alexis Aranda. There are some of them, okay? And there are more flute concertos uh, commissioned by other flute players. For instance, Maria Granillo, Leonardo Coral, Ever Vasquez. So as you can see, there are a lot, a lot of music for flute as a soloist instrument, okay? So uh, <laughs> I wanted to, I'd like to, to share with you now, yeah. I'd like to share with you these um, examples of the recordings so i hope you can 
see. Please, Darwin, tell me if everyone can see that. Okay. Sí, sir. Okay. So this is uh, the double concerto for flute, harp, and orchestra by Eduardo Angulo. It's the first movement called Allegro, un poco agitato. And I'm going to, to, to present you just a few minutes of each work in order for you to have an idea about all this music. <laughs> Then this is the exposition of the piece. Um, well, as you can uh, hear, uh, Eduardo Angulo is very good in orchestration, is very well written, is a, is a really wonderful composer. And then uh, I'm going to, uh, to present you uh, the third moment of uh, this very concerto uh, in a nationalism uh, language. Thank you. 
and then it changes to the alto flute. So uh, Eduardo Angulo identified his uh, music with the letter literature uh, mainstream called Realismo Magico. It's a little bit the, the border between the real and the unreal. And as you can hear, he's very, very good uh, composer. He has a lot of music for flute and orchestra and chamber music with flute too. So I'm going to, to present to you another uh, composer, Mexican composer. Uh, his name is Roberto Peña. He lives in South Mexico in Chiapas state. There's a jungle even uh, at that, uh, in that state. So uh, one can hear this uh, sound of the jungle in his music. This flute concerto is very difficult, very good level. And I like a lot, uh, uh, it's another language completely different. <laughs> Very interesting, eh? very. <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to uh, put a little bit of the flute concerto by Eduardo Gamboa. Eduardo Gamboa 
is another great uh, composer. And uh, I'd like uh, to present to you the, the third movement. Uh, the whole concerto is like a one movement. So the third section of this uh, concerto is called Mogador. So that's, that was Eduardo Gamboa's flute concerto, rhythmically very, very complex, very difficult, but uh, uh, very effective. I think very, uh, uh, I, I feel thrilled when, when I play this flute concerto. So um, now I'd like to present uh, to you another composer, quite young, after uh, working with, um, uh, a whole generation of composers, I took the decision to uh, start working with young composers. So as a result, uh, we have this uh, piece called Particulas en Movimiento. I don't know, Darwin, how to <laughs> translate this. Uh, particles in movement? Maybe? Yes, particles yeah. in movement, yeah. Okay. So uh, he's another language, very contemporary, very uh, avant-garde. This with the uh, orchestra of the university, or Philharmonic Orchestra.
That was Partículas en Movimiento by uh, Francisco Cortés. So I'd like to uh, come again to the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation. So uh, I think you, you, you uh, know this saying in, in, in English, I think, uh, good news, no news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because usually uh, when I was in, in, in France, living in France or in Germany or in Spain, uh, or when I was in Canada, in Canada all the, the news about uh, Latin American countries were bad news. So uh, I'd like to, to take this opportunity to tell you that in Latin America, there are good news too. And music is one of them. Yes, uh, uh, a lot of, of musicians, a lot of composers are uh, working very hard. And uh, really, we are artists. And I'd like to, to say you that uh, we are supposed to be sensitive people, and I think really, I really think we are, and it's our responsibility to um, show the world the good things of each culture. And for me, I really like to thank you uh, for this opportunity to show uh, another aspect of my culture as Mexican and as Latin American, because it's the same for Venezuela, Argentina, Guatemala, and other uh, Latin American countries. So I like to invite you to uh, approach this music, these composers. As I told you at the beginning, uh, there's a huge, huge amount of new music in all our countries. And I think it's worth uh, to, to, to uh, to, to, to play all this music. So uh, I'd like to, tell, to give you my email in order uh, to, to have a contact with you if you want. If, I, if you want uh, me to share with you all this music uh, is available. Uh, one of our problems in Latin America, I, I can tell uh, for Mexico, but I think in Latin America is the same. Uh, our problem is uh, to publish all this music because it's very difficult in our countries uh, to, to have uh, uh, and to edit the music, to, to publish uh, the music, to sell this music. 
But if you uh, approach uh, directly the composers or the flute players, there's a, a great opportunity. Uh, there's a, a huge uh, possibility that uh, we can share all this music with you. So, gracias. If anyone has any questions right now, we can open the, the floor, uh, uh, the room for anyone who has questions for Maestro Miguel Angel, so you can ask. Oh, in Spanish, la gente, uh, there's people here that speak Spanish. Uh, say, uh, <laughs> no, in English. I think in English. <laughs> yes, let, let, me, let me practice my English. It's not very good, so I'd like to practice my English. So, si, si hay alguien que quiere hacer una pregunta en este momento del maestro, por favor, hágala y yo lo puedo traducir. No hay problema. There are some uh, questions here in the chat. Um, hello, Maestro. Uh, my name is Karen Wagner, but I'm not related to the Wagner <laughs> flute makers in Mexico. But, um, I don't have a question, but I want to say thank you so much. This was quite an, an amazing um, hour with you and with everyone and um, very inspiring. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Ah, you're very welcome. Eh? De nada. <laughs> okay. Another one, another uh... A comment or critics too. There's a question on the on the chat that says from um, Stephanie says I play a lot a lot uh, I play a lot of chamber music. I'm interested in play um, in what chamber music you have played by these composers. Uh, well, uh, chamber music uh, there really is it, huge the amount. Uh, uh, maybe hundred. Hundred uh, works by only these four composers, for instance, for flute, flute and guitar, flute, uh, viola and harp, flute and piano, obviously, flute and quintet, wind quintet, flute and strings, and there's a lot of music. So uh, if, if you if you um, look in YouTube. Uh, for instance, on or in the social media in Facebook, there is a group called uh, Flutis from Latin America. If you take uh, any name, you ask about uh, a composer, this person will give you a list of new music of uh, of new works. The and they they are uh, uh, these works of a very very good level, very demanding, very challenging repertoire. So I really invite you to to take this contact with 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 us. <laughs> Hi, this is Deirdre, and I think you can't see me because it says New York Flute Club, and I can't figure out how to make myself <laughs> visible. Wait a minute, maybe I will, here we go. My turtleneck here. Um, first of all, I wanna say thank you for spending time with us, for opening our eyes and our ears to beautiful music that without you and Darwin, without you also, I never would have heard. So I really, really appreciate your, your taking the time. I have a quick question for you that yes. maybe other people might have as well. Can you share some of how you warm up? You have a beautiful sound. How do you warm up? You know, I, I used to take a, about an hour to, to warm up. But a, one day when I was in France, uh, you know, my, my, this is a very good uh, story for, because I, I used to be a dancer. So I, I, I had no scholarship to make my studies in France. So I used to work as a dancer. So one day uh, I been invited to, to, with my group to make a presentation in a French television. So we were waiting. And then the producer, the floor manager, was very excited, very nervous, and he 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 cried, Monsieur Rampal is coming. 
And I said, what, Rampal is going to be here? Wow. So I saw really Rampal arriving from the airport from Japan, take his flute and go to the stage. Marielle Norman, the harp player was already there and he played with a great sound. So I thought, you know, maybe my conception of sound is not quite right. I have to make a revision because I think it's possible to have a very good sound from the first note. And at that point, I realized that uh, before having the flute, one uh, must have a, an image of the sound. And then with the whole technique you, you already have, you can have a, a good sound, I mean, uh, from the beginning. So I don't really warm up a lot. So I make some intervals, for instance, uh, fourths, do, C, F, F, C, and then chromatic, and then the interval goes uh, a little bit uh, uh, from fifths and sixths, and then like this, but it takes me, I mean, 10 minutes or 15 minutes only. But it's because I saw Rampal arriving and takes his flute and play great like this. Well, I hope sometime you can come to New York. I'd like to invite <laughs> you to the flute fair. <laughs> I'd be delighted. Well, please, I'd, be I'd be honored. I'd be honored. Thanks again. <laughs> Hi. Hi, this is Jenny Raffaele. And I have a question for you. This was just so wonderful. It was, it just felt as if we were, I was traveling, right? So I want to know what, what kind of, what kind of um, presentations do you do for children? Because I think it would be beautiful for children, you know, to hear your music. You see, I've got one in the background. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, I have twins. And when, when they were born, I asked myself, uh, what, what kind of music uh, there is for, for children? And in the concerts for children, there was the same, at least here in Mexico, always uh, Peter and the Wolf, Britain's uh, youth uh, guide, orchestral guide, and uh, I don't remember, uh, Sensan, Carnaval, this animo, and then that's all, that's it. So I commissioned to Eduardo Angulo uh, a flute a concerto called the Pied Piper of Hamelin, yes, for children. And actually it's a ballet where the flute player uh, interact with dancers and uh, at the same time, uh, the flute player is playing a flute concerto and uh, this piece is really wonderful. And uh, I, that was my contribution to the uh, children's repertoire, for instance. We have a question here in the chat that says, could you please share your experience as a soloist and how the Mexican flute Rep, uh, flute soloist repertoire has developed since you started your career? Well, a, a soloist is very difficult because uh, usually in, in, in the mind of, uh, of most of the conductors, soloist instruments are voice, piano, and strings, especially violin, and then other instruments. So, about 26% uh, of soloists are piano players. 13% of soloists are violin players, violinists. And less than 1% are flute players in Mexico. But I think it's the same in other countries because I, I used to analyze the, the, the programs of 
many orchestras and it was the same. It's a little bit unjust. So it took me a lot of effort to uh, enter in the mainstream of soloists in Mexico. And then, uh, but it was by commissioning new pieces because uh, uh, um, uh, a, new, uh, a new piece, a new repertoire, uh, the premiere of a, a new concerto is very interesting for conductors. But the thing is that uh, I was, um, I had a conversation with a manager in the United States and he told me, you know, Miguel, uh, having a soloist career is uh, very difficult because uh, only 3% of the soloists in the world are flute players. So you have to, of this uh, 3, 3%, you have to compete with Europeans, North Americans and Asians. So you as Latin American flute player, you have no possibility to develop a soloist career international. And it's, it's real. It's real because it's very difficult to play abroad. Uh, uh, the, all this music is wonderful music, but I have no possibility to play a soloist in other countries. I remember a conversation with an Italian uh, conductor. Uh, he used to play flute. Maybe you know him, Marzio Conti. Marzio Conti is a great flute player, but now he's a conductor. I gave him this, uh, my first CD, this magical realism uh, with the flute and harp concerto. And the next day he told me, Miguel is really wonderful, this music, but I cannot uh, invite you a soloist because my uh, orchestra has a contract with uh, uh, agents, agents, uh, soloist agents, and I'm not allowed to hire any or invite any soloist, but only of that uh, company. So it's very difficult. It's been very difficult, but uh, uh, I feel. Uh, lucky because I, I play a lot here in Mexico, in, in the whole country. And sometimes uh, I have the opportunity to play in Ecuador, in Colombia, or uh, even in Brazil. I, I had the opportunity to play in Brazil. So, uh, or in Canada too, uh, uh, thanks to Aleli Pimienta who runs the uh, Latin American Food Festival the, uh, over there. Any other questions? <laughs> Don't be shy. We have to get you to Miami. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, it's, I it's did Latin it. America here in Miami. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Any other question? Is there um, any, re any recommendations for um, flute and strings? Or, fl or, or trios for flute, strings, and piano? Well, uh, Eduardo Gamboa has a very, very good uh, quintet for flute and, and qu string quartet called Transparencias. Very difficult, very nice piece, very good level. I think uh, Tadeu Coelho recorded it. And uh, I'm going to uh, record uh, next year the um, a piece by Eduardo Angulo for flute and string quartet too, called Albatros, like the bird. And uh, uh, Ginastera has the Las Impresiones de la Puna, it's another very good piece. And uh, I think there are a few more. Uh, if you send me an email, I can think about it and then uh, give you a list uh, with uh, this kind of repertoire. Maestro, yes. I have a question. Where can we f buy your CDs? I have only one, the first one, but I'm interested in buy others. But I am not in Mexico, so 
is that possible to buy your CDs from here, from the US? Uh, yes, but, but uh, you send me an email and I send to you the, the, the CDs. Yes, I have eight. Okay. Have eight, eight CDs, four uh, with uh, flute concertos, flute and orchestra, and four with, uh, well, five for flute and orchestra and three in chamber music. So I can send it to you. If you send me an email, uh, I'd be glad to, to send it to you, okay? Maestro, ¿podría compartir nuevamente su correo electrónico por aquí, por el chat? Yes. I just asked him if he could um, share with us his email again. I think most of your CDs are on Amazon because I have purchased almost all of them on Amazon. So if anything happens, you can always go. There only, in Amazon, uh, there are only four because I used to, to, to work with this um, uh, Urtex uh, uh, classics, digital classics, but uh, the, the other four CDs are independent uh, uh, recordings. Yes. Okay, so before we go, does somebody ask any other question? I know at this point everybody everybody has a lot to think of, but if you have any questions, you can always email um, Maestro Villanueva, and he will. I know for sure that he will be very happy to answer your email. So if there's any other question, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, there was actually a lot of people that, um, and I'm very uh, grateful for you all to be here. Um, so thank you, Maestro Miguel Angel. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful night. Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity. I, I, I'd like to tell you that uh, uh, we are neighbors, United States and Mexico, we are neighbors. And uh, if, if we don't uh, get to know each other, there's no hope. Only by art, by artists, uh, this will be possible. Okay, so uh, let's keep in contact, let's uh, share music, let's share uh, our experiences, and please come to Mexico and uh, listen to all this music, okay? And the same for other countries of Latin America, see? Thank you very much. Thank you. And before you go, let me um, uh, announce this Sunday, we have um, Aleli Pimienta on the regular concert schedule. So don't miss that. The, the concert is titled um, American Neighbors. So it's just exactly what Miguel Angel just mentioned. So I hope you can join us in that concert. So it, it is it starts at 4.30 concert uh, for a lecture and then the title is at 5.30. So don't miss it. So have a good night. Gracias, gracias, maestro. Buenas noches a todos. Gracias. Adiós. Bye bye. Gracias. Thank you, Darwin. You're welcome. Wow, wonderful program. It was very good. We still have a couple of people in, I think. I'm going to end the, uh, yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah.